right now at 6, the electric bill shock being felt all the way to the state capitol. What some lawmakers want to do that they say will bring relief. And a road rage incident in Columbia has troopers questioning what happened. It involved a gun and a stolen car. I'll have more coming up next. Also, a presidential debate is set between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. We'll tell you when and where it will take place and what the candidates had to say about each other yesterday. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good morning. Happy Friday. Thanks so much for starting yours off with us, America Areas. And I'm Tim Lambers. Yes, happy Friday. Now let's get ourselves a good weekend, and we're going to start with the forecast. Meteorologist Rachel Piscatelli joins us. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Today, yeah. a weather impact alert mm -hmm. day yeah. for the heavy rain on the way. But right now, we are dealing with occasional showers out there. Post-tropical storm Debbie bringing us that rain later on today into this evening. So we do have that weather impact alert for today between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., although we could see some occasional showers throughout the day today. We're looking at downpours, storms, and gusty winds, so definitely want to have a way to get alerts later on, maybe bring in some of your outdoor uh, furniture and things like that as we are looking at gusts towards about 30 to 45 miles per hour for areas inland, stronger gusts likely along the shoreline. We'll have to watch for any isolated flooding issues, and there is a risk for some severe thunderstorms that could lead to some spin-ups. We'll watch for that. A wind gust or wind advisory posted for our shoreline communities, gusts towards about 50, and that that's where we think the strongest winds will likely be. But in the meantime, right now, it is an overcast start to our morning. We have occasional showers and some areas of mist, some fog out there, too. There's post-tropical Storm Debbie that's bringing... Uh, some heavy rain and even some tornado warnings just south of Washington D.C. this morning. So occasional showers are possible throughout the afternoon, but the heaviest rain is likely arriving after about 7 or 8 o'clock. Temperatures right now are starting off in the 60s and 70s. It's muggy to start. It's going to be a muggy afternoon with highs in the 80s. We clear out the skies just in time for the weekend. More details on that coming up. 602, let's get a check out on the road. Symphony, first time I get to say good morning yeah, to you. Yeah, good morning to you, Rachel, and good morning. Morning to you, Sunshine. If you're just waking up, uh, we are already dealing with an incident out on the roads. Here's what you need to know before you head out. It's happening out in Hamden along Route 15. This is a two vehicle wreck on the uh, northbound side between exits. 59 and 60. However, it doesn't appear to be causing a huge issue on the roads at this point, but we'll be sure to keep an eye on that. We'll keep you posted throughout the morning. Right now, taking a live look at 84 through downtown Hartford, and you can see the roads are wet. So make sure you have your lights on, your wipers on, and you slow down and take it easy as you head out the door this morning. Quick look at our Hartford drive times. Speeds are around where they need to be this morning. No major delays to report here around the Hartford area. We have your next update coming up at 630. And while we are not anticipating to see too much of an impact from Debbie here in Connecticut, Eversource said it's still closely monitoring the storm and is prepared to respond. Eversource is bringing in outside line workers and prepping equipment and vehicles just in case there's a lot of outages. And if you do happen to lose power, Eversource is asking everyone to be patient and to get that storm kit ready now, a kit that should include flashlights, batteries, and water. Again, get it ready to go. Also, it's a good idea to keep your cell phone fully charged as well as your electric vehicle fully charged if you have one. Well, this morning, some lawmakers are calling for a special session to help address rising electric bills. Yeah, it's an issue affecting a lot of people out there, and some of you are telling us your bills are double what you normally pay. That's because the public benefits portion of the bill went up to cover some state-required programs. Yeah, so now the question is what to do about it. Fox 61's Lindsay Kane is joining us with a look at some proposals that are out there. Lindsay, good morning. Hi, good morning. Well, people across the state still in shock with their monthly Eversource bills. Now, Connecticut Republicans are calling on Governor Lamont to take immediate action to make sure families across the state aren't feeling this extra financial burden. Republican leaders are calling for a special session to address these skyrocketing costs. They're also calling for the governor to issue a moratorium on the collection of these additional charges on people's monthly bills. Now, electric bills are significantly more expensive across the state. The standard service rate that you pay per kilowatt hour for the amount of electricity you use gets adjusted twice a year.
year. Now, last month, that rate went down, but the cost to generate that energy, which in Connecticut is 40 percent nuclear, has gone up due to a state contract signed years ago. That accounts for about 80 percent of the increase to your bill. The other 20 percent comes from what's called a public benefits charge. It's a series of fees tacked on to make the grid more reliable and greener, but it also accounts for you to pay the electric bills of the people who couldn't pay during COVID. Republican lawmakers speaking out outside the Capitol, pointing at their opponents across the aisle to step up. Some senators are comparing the public benefits charges to going out to a restaurant and making other tables pay your bill. It's unacceptable. No one in that restaurant expected that. No one asked for that. No one had any input to that. They're just being told you're buying. Uh, we have a very tight budget right now. There's no surplus. There seems to be a lot of back and forth between lawmakers still, but the only thing that has been agreed on at this point is that lawmakers should have done something about this months ago before it was too late, like using leftover COVID relief money to offset the difference. Governor Lamont says that money has dried up and there are no extra state funds to help out. Lawmakers need to come up with about $200 million, and that would just be a short-term fix. Tim and Erica, we'll send things back over to you. Hi, Lindsay, All right, Lindsay, thank you. thank you. We'll stick to wait right now, and one man is in custody after a scary road rage incident that happened in Tallinn County. Now, state police said it's just the latest of a lot of different road rage incidents they've seen this year. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin joins us right now. She's live in Columbia, which is around where that happened. Brooke, what did happen here? Well, first and foremost, I want to say that thankfully troopers tell us nobody was hurt in this incident. They very well could have been, as those state police officers tell us, this was very dangerous. There was a gun involved along with a stolen car and excessive speeding by that driver. Now, last night, troopers say they got a call about a man who was displaying a gun to other drivers out on Route 6. Right now, police are still working to confirm where exactly the incident started and exactly how far that driver got before he was pulled over. Troopers tell us the driver stopped right near the Columbia Coventry line. They arrested him and recovered that gun. They also say that the car came up as stolen. Police have not released that man's name at this time. Now, this is just the latest of many reported road rage incidents in Connecticut this year. In January, police say a man shot and killed another man on I-691 in Meriden. Another incident in May, police say a man pepper sprayed another driver in Litchfield. And then in June, state police say a man who had kids in the car at the time pointed a gun at a driver in Old Saybrook. And this is just a few of those incidents. Mental health experts say taking time to calm down is key to de-escalating a situation. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you're getting a little amped up, really simple things like four seconds of deep breathing, hold that breath for four seconds, exhale that breath for four seconds. These really very easy to do deep breathing exercises allow you to concentrate, get your blood pressure down, make sure you don't react in a dangerous way to other people. And we are still waiting to find out more information on this story, such as the name of that driver, how, how far they got while they were flashing that gun, and also what started this in the first place. As soon as we have any information from police, we'll get that out to you. Live in Columbia, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut, Connecticut News Station. Thanks so much, Brooke. I'll check back. Well, a former Wallingford Middle School teacher is being accused of having a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old. Officials say 52-year-old Renee DeLeon is facing several charges, including the second-degree sexual assault. Police say it happened between April and December of 2008. However, they weren't tipped off until April of this year. DeLeon is expected to appear in court later this month. A 16-year-old in the hospital after shooting at a Dollar General in Hartford. Officers say it happened just before 6 o'clock last night on Barber Street. They believe the teenager was shot after a fight that happened inside the store. Police have not said if they've made any arrests. Well, this morning, a 15-year-old is recovering after being saved from drowning last night. Rocky Hill police said the teen was found unconscious in a swimming pool at the concierge apartments on Cold Spring Road. But bystanders got there just in time, used CPR, and first responders even revived the teenager on the scene who regained consciousness and was communicating with others before being taken to a hospital. Now, while we don't know what led up to this near drowning, here are some swimming safety reminders from the American Red Cross. 
Try to swim in areas that are supervised by lifeguards, or at least make sure you swim with a friend so you can't be left alone. If you've got kids, make sure you're watching them while they're uh, on in the water or even near the water. And to help better do that, avoid distractions like cell phones and iPads. And always stay within arm's reach if you're with anyone whom you know is a weak swimmer.